Um, and Karika-san, yes, happy to um, bring you on later. Um, I'll bring you later into the schedule. And Karika-san, yes, um, happy to um, bring you on um, later. I'll all right, let's schedule. get started on this. Um, I'd like to welcome um, all the panelists um, and attendees, um, <laughs> almost an right, equal number of both. Let's get started on this. Um, the um, General like Assembly session at the end of an APAN meeting is an opportunity um, for everyone to see just the sheer breadth of activities that have occurred in the last week. Um, even the, uh, the, the agenda pages on Hoover don't give you a sense of just the sheer richness of all the sessions that have been occurring during the week um, and the number of discussions and topics and uh, things that have been occurring. So the General Assembly is an opportunity in a plenary to bring everyone together and get a very quick, um, and I mean quick, summary of all the working groups and projects and BOFs and other um, project sessions that have occurred during the week. Um, it's also an opportunity to briefly thank our sponsors um, and also to get a brief keynote um, from occasionally uh, potential partners of APAN or other interested parties. Um, I would like to introduce um, today our main keynote speaker, although not talking for too long. Um, well, I'll give you as much time as you need, Raj. Yeah, six or seven minutes should be right. So Raj is the, um, I believe the title is uh, Vice President for Asia Pacific for the Internet Society. Um, and he and I and Francis Lee uh, have been talking over the last uh, couple of months about potential ways of developing a closer partnership um, between ISOC and APAN uh, and the members of the APAN community. Um, and he, he may uh, address some of those things, but um, I'm looking forward to finding ideas from our community where you know, we, our partnership with ISOC could be developed into something deeper and richer. Uh, we have some interesting ideas already and I'm sure there are more to come. So without further ado, let me hand it over to Raj for our, uh, to kick us off. Well, thanks very much, Marcus, much appreciated. Uh, I shall attempt to share my screen. I have got a short slide deck. I won't run through all the slides, uh, just a couple of them. Um, and I hope that's coming through now. Can you, can folks see my slide? Yep, all right, good, wonderful. So thanks very much to the APEN Secretariat, Market Fra Marcus Francis and all the crew for allowing me this opportunity. Uh, and, and first off, let me congratulate the APEN Secretariat and all the people behind uh, this event this week, including our friends from Indonesia, of course. Um, I, I, Marcus, earlier you said that you know there were so many things happening this week, and I can attest to that. You know, I found it a bit overwhelming actually, um, and it was just you know I struggled to. I mean, I, I wish I could have attended more sessions and listened in, but unfortunately I couldn't. So uh, congratulations on a job well done. I know these are uh, strange circumstances we live in today, with uh, the effects of the pandemic, and you know, but still being able to bring people together, of course, is so very great. So that leads me very nicely to why I'm here today. Um, as Marcus pointed out, over the last couple of months or several months, uh, we've been having some discussions on how the Internet Society can deepen our relationship with the APEN community. Uh, over the years, I think you know we've had some ad hoc engagement. We've done some things with perhaps some of the, your members individually or in some countries, for instance. But we've never really had a cohesive or coherent approach to how, how we engage with each other. So that's something I, we've been working on, and I hope that we can uh, you know bring some of those uh, things or initiatives around in the coming months. Um, of course, we're also always open to ideas. Uh, so what I'd like to do very quickly, to, uh, if I can make my slides work, oh, there we go. Uh, just a very quick overview of what the Internet Society is. Uh, I'm, and I hope some of you are aware of us as an organization. We'll be 30 years old next year, so we've been around for a while. And pretty much ever since our founding, we've been very involved in, in the technical parts of making the Internet work. That continues today, but obviously as the Internet has evolved, uh, so have we. Uh, so we have a couple of things that we do, um, including, for example, policy, uh, engaging with policymakers and so on. But fundamentally, we still remain true to our roots, which is, you know, we are a technical organization happening, uh, helping build technical infrastructure and ensuring that the Internet remains, of course, open, globally connected, secure and trustworthy. Uh, some of you may know that uh, we are the uh, legal home or 
uh, organizational home for the Internet Engineering Task Force. And over the years, that's, uh, that relationship has also, of course, uh, evolved. Um, in terms of how we organize, we have chapters uh, around the world. We have special interest groups. We have individual members, and we also have organization members. In addition to that, we have partners, which is something, for instance, we're working with APEN uh, on to see how we can come up with some sort of partnership so that we can you know, both work together towards a common good. Um, I'll, I'll skip the rest and I'll share the slides later with the APEN Secretariat, so you're welcome to have a look at what else is there. This is where our main offices are around the world. Our Asia Pacific Regional Headquarters, of course, is in Singapore, which is, uh, you know, my other home, I suppose I could say. Um, and then moving straight on in the interest of time, you know, I guess no one could ever have predicted what 2020 would do to the world. And I think we're still suffering from those uh, right now, including where I am right now in New South Wales, Australia, where, you know, we're in lockdown and looks like we will be for quite some time yet. Uh, one thing that's pretty, uh, that, you know, that's, I think, kept a lot of things going, and it's not just, you know, our industry or our sector, but pretty much every sector is the internet and how people were able to use that. And, and, and see how they could have some sort of semblance of normal life. Uh, you know, surprisingly, the internet and its infrastructure has remained resilient all through the pandemic and it remains so. Uh, but at the same time, I think we can't take all that for granted. I think, you know, there have been many challenges around the world, particularly in the education field, uh, in trying to ensure that, you know, our students, be they university students or primary or high school students keep on, uh, you know, maintaining their education uh, through, through all this. Um, and, and so that's where I think, you know, some of the potential relationships we have with APEN would, would be really good. Uh, now, obviously, we all need to work together to ensure that the internet is there for everyone. Uh, and, you know, we as an organization can't do it alone. Neither can APEN in what all it does. So, you know, I think it's so very important that we collaborate and cooperate. Uh, in the little focus areas we have, there's always some sort of overlaps, overlaps that we have. Now, very quickly, in terms of what we are focused on as an organization, so three things, basically. We need to make the internet stronger, um, you know, ensure that the open internet that has given us so much over the years remains so, and we're able to continue uh, uh, leveraging opportunities and maximizing the potential that offers. We need to grow the internet. Uh, I think we're all quite aware that uh, you know, with all the uh, achievements we've had uh, about connectivity and access and so on, half the world still remains offline. And unfortunately, a large part of that half the world is in our region. So that's, I think, even more where well, we have to do something about it collectively. And then, of course, finally, we need to empower people. You know, we need to give them the opportunity to do what they can, to maximize what they can do. And of course, uh, as with, with the little each person's uh, individual contribution, you know, we have a collective hope that can be so much better as a result. Now, to help all that along, we have six projects that we're focused on, and uh, we plan to continue most of this into next year as well. One is building community networks. Now, you will see a lot of people are doing a lot of things in and around access. But fundamentally, as I said earlier, we still have half the people uh, in the world offline. And further to that, uh, most of those people are in underserved and unserved areas. So they are the hardest to bring online. You know, the first couple of billion that we brought online was so much easier than the last couple of billions will be. So that's why we're pushing uh, community networks as a complementary access solution where people at the village level or, or at the local community level can get together and run their own networks and be connected and of course uh, benefit from digital opportunities. Then there's, of course, the infrastructure and community development part, which is a bit where we are, of course, engaging with the APEN community on, which is ensuring that you know, the technical, technical communities are there, we're able to support what they need to do, and, of course, the continuous upskilling that's so very important. We also have a project around measuring the internet, which is looking at uh, the trends and data on the internet and what's been happening. I think it's very important to keep a track of you know, where we are paddling in terms of what's happening in, in the wider world. So there you'll see things like IPv6 and what the adoption levels are. But at the same time, we have things like monitoring internet shutdowns when people start uh, interfering with internet and infrastructure. I think you're, I'm sure, all quite aware that once governments and, and authorities start tampering with technical infrastructure, it impacts everyone. It's not just localized impact, that's always the case. 
Uh, three other projects very quickly. We have the Internet way of working, which is, you know, when governments and other authorities make decisions and even com commercial companies, for example, bringing in a new technology or putting in new regulation, you know, we're asking them to take an impact assessment of what is it that you're doing and what the potential implications will be for the wider Internet. So that's the Internet way of working, uh, Internet way of networking project. Uh, encryption, you know, as more and more people come online, as we become ever more dependent on digital technologies, encryption is critical to ensuring that, you know, we are able to exchange information safely, securely, and of course with privacy safeguards in place. Uh, yet we see around the world, there are many attempts to try and uh, tamper with encryption to break encryption, unfortunately, including <laughs> in my own country, Australia, where, you know, uh, we've had the government uh, tampering with that as well, with, with some of the legislation they've put in. So, you know, it's so very important that, you know, if we want uh, cyber security uh, to be something that we all have, without encryption, it's very hard to do. Um, and then finally, uh, lastly, but not the least, of course, there's securing global routing. Now, we all know that the internet is a network of networks. They all connect with each other voluntarily. But we need to ensure that, that the basis for those connections remain secure. And now I think we all also know that uh, when the internet or the protocols were founded, security really wasn't a concern. People were meant more interested in getting stuff connected. But over time, I think security has even, uh, you know, it's progressively become more of an issue. And taking some very simple steps with routing security can ensure that we are able to, uh, you know, I like to say, you know, ensure that the foundations of internet infrastructure are all um, well secured. You know, we can fiddle with uh, other forms of cybersecurity, but if our foundation itself, and it's just like building a house, right? If you don't have strong foundations, the rest of the house, it's not much use having a fancy roof on the house when the foundations can't support that structure. So pretty much for that reason, I think global, global writing is so very important. Um, there are many ways to engage with the Internet Society, and we're going to run through all that. One thing I do want to call out, uh, please consider joining us if you're not a member. It's free in the individual member uh, category. Some of you may be interested in joining as an organizational member, so we invite you for that as well. We have some learning courses which are available freely. Please look, have a look at that. All the links are on that slide. And the last one, the Internet Society Foundation, which uh, uh, is not a very old entity, which we, we set up, that has some research grants uh, available as well. So I'd invite you to have a look at that web, to the, at the website and see if there's something you could apply from there, uh, particularly in, in the work that, we do, that you're doing. So that's all I had to say, but I do want to just uh, you know, reiterate that we would like very much to work with the wider APIN community. And part of my uh, mission has been over the last several months to see how we can bring that about. And you know, Marcus and Francis have been very kind uh, in terms of their time and the discussions we've had. And I indeed look forward to see how we can deepen, deepen that uh, in the future. So with that, thank you very much. And this has been a great event. And maybe I took too long, Marcus, so I apologize. That's all right. You are very welcome to, um, given the uh, opportunity to develop this partnership. Uh, we really look forward to it. Um, and I think we've got some good uh, announcements to make, hopefully, in the not too distant future. Um, let me move along swiftly then and invite one of our other uh, sponsors. Um, as we have already mentioned, sponsors are quite fundamental to, uh, to all APAN meetings, even the virtual ones. Um, so can I invite uh, Mr. Sawani Duinanto from ID Nick? Yeah, is it still running? Okay. Please go ahead. Okay. Good afternoon, uh, everyone. Uh, uh, thanks all the APAN uh, 52 for the panel, uh, panelists and also the attendees that uh, joined this uh, event. Uh, first of all, I'd like to appreciate that we have an opportunity to sponsor this, uh, sponsoring this event. Uh, apologize for Mr. Uh, Andy Kus uh, Kusuma as chief of IDNIC. Uh, he cannot join this uh, closing ceremony because uh, he have already have another meeting, uh, but he sent the gratitude and uh, appreciation for the success full of this event. Uh, this is also the first time IDNIC is sponsoring this event. Hopefully this is the beginning of a good relationship and collaboration uh, between us. Uh, it was a very exciting watching the session. Yeah, I witnessed great, strong, and educational session during this entire event. Uh, but to everyone, uh, due to everyone' effort and participation, it has been an unforgettable experience. And I hope everyone takes away some of the lesson 
uh, that uh, brought from this uh, event. Uh, this is very an uh, enjoyable experience and uh, not just a fun pleasure. It's gaining more uh, technology update. Uh, finally, uh, from us, this is a uh, uh, thank you again. And maybe all of you is blessed and in good health and happiness during this uh, pandemics. I think uh, that's all, uh, Mr. Marcus. Uh, thank you for the time. Thank you very much. Uh, we greatly appreciate uh, the support of our of our sponsors. Yeah. Um, let me move on to Che Hu Cheng from AP Nick, one of our long term and good friends uh, of APAN. Che Hu, are you there? Hi. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Go ahead. Yeah. In fact. Uh... I think I'll uh, do it uh, more as a partner of APEN uh, than a sponsor of APEN. Um, and in fact, I will also cover, you know, some of the work that uh, we are doing with APEN. Um, maybe I'll skip through uh, the first few slides about like uh, what we are, including, of course, APNIC is a uh, internet registry and we do uh, you know, uh, internet development, and we do technical training. Uh, our focus is internet infrastructure, and we do vendor neutral training. And our platform is APN Academy for the online, and also we'll use this as our branding for all of our training uh, going forward. And um, and we are very close to APN. In fact because most of the uh, NRANs and RANs are our members. And uh, we are also a member of Barnet uh, because we, we, we want to join EduRome and we want to offer this EduRome service to our members who are also Academy users. And uh, we can also make use of Rnet to have good connectivity uh, with our new networks. And we are still struggling to join EduGain uh, for our academy, but hopefully we can have it set up by the end of this year. And, uh, you know, the most importantly, I think is, you know, we are now even closer uh, with uh, our new community, with our close relationship with the White Project. I'll uh, talk more about that. Uh, well, for this APEN, uh, we have done quite a bit. Uh, we did a half-day tutorial on the introduction to Surakata in, uh, intrusion detection system uh, by Warrant. Uh, we had up to 25 concurrent attendees uh, this time, but only around seven attended from start to finish. Uh, I think it's all right, but, uh, you know, it's always a challenge to uh, do training uh, in this kind of a conference setup. Uh, online is even, of course, more challenging. And as for the labs, uh, one of the labs that we did uh, is actually available on our academy platform. So, like, even after the training, people can uh, continue to do the lab on our platform. And uh, we welcome inputs for all the future APNIC training uh, for APAN. And uh, of course, we'll continue to do training. And other contribution by us, uh, like Atlee, our senior internet security specialist, uh, he chaired panel on uh, cybersecurity vulnerability within APAN. I, I hope he did a good job. And also uh, chair a session about arena pack uh, and related network plans at the network engineering workshop. And we also have Jamie to help with the technical support. Uh, he is also a co-chair of security working group, but according to him, he has not done much this time, but yeah, I'm sure he, he will you know, contribute more you know, uh, in the future. And uh, yeah, I just mentioned, uh, we also a, a sponsor of um, this uh, APEN. And uh, in fact, uh, we are very willing to you know, continue to sponsor future APENs. Um, people might be interested in like our recent development regarding uh, our tr uh, a trust together with WIPE project. Uh, you can see it from here. Uh, is, is a collaboration with Y Project and uh, the trustees of this trust uh, are like Jim Murray and Paul Wilson, uh, Director General. And this trust will provide funding support for internet IOE development projects in Asia Pacific. 
And we also have uh, APNIC Foundation uh, to help do fundraising, uh, not just from the trust, but also from other funding sources, and then help manage the projects. And uh, APNIC uh, will be the executor of uh, the projects. And uh, a bit more about Arena Pack. In fact, uh, there was a uh, presentation at the Network Engineering uh, Workshop by Sai Sang. Um, but in short, uh, it's a new uh, regional r and backbone uh, for Asia Pacific. It's part of APONET. Uh, you know, the funding is from the trust operated by Y Project with the support of uh, APNIC. Uh, there's already a uh, 100 gig circuit between Guam and Tokyo up and running and leveraging GORAX and uh, uh, it will connect to GXP Tokyo uh, very soon. And there will be another circuit, uh, shared circuit between Guam and Singapore uh, to be up uh, in two months time. Uh, this is in partnership with Internet to Rnet and Transnet, leveraging uh, GORAX and uh, Singaran Open Exchange. And uh, we'll add circuits between Guam and other economies, including uh, you know, uh, Philippines and Indonesia, uh, one by one. And uh, you can refer to the presentation um, uh, through this link. And we are also, of course, uh, you know, uh, having uh, AIIII Soy Asia, both uh, the projects under wide. Um, and uh, now it will you know, uh, leverage Arena Pack Network going forward. And uh, it's also have this, uh, it's having the funding from APNIC Foundation and APNIC, uh, uh, the Trust. Uh, there is a program uh, which, uh, which is in the making, uh, which is called Asia Pacific Internet Engineer Program, uh, which is supposed to be a uh, program for training the internet engineers with uh, field works uh, after you know, all the training courses are like, 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 like completed. And this is in partnership with uh, ATAC in Japan and leveraging uh, you know, our APNA Academy platform and contact. And I would, uh, I foresee that there will be more collaboration with uh, APAN community in the future uh, through this, uh, you know, initiative. And uh, you can refer to uh, the link here for like uh, more information about this and of course other related activities. And uh, back to APNIC, um, you know, the future of our training and economy uh, we will, uh, you know, scale up and grow our training and technical assistance ca capacity substantially uh, with the funding of APNIC Foundation and uh, our trust. And we are hiring, uh, you know, if you have, you know, uh, students or like um, other like, like friends and partners uh, who are interested to join APNIC, you can click on this link. And uh, of course, all our training and, and, and technical assistance activities will leverage our uh, APNIC Academy platform and we will use it at the branding and, and we'll uh, you construct uh, like uh, good uh, training content curriculum. Um, and we also are expanding our community trainers network. Uh, we will recruit uh, you know, uh, operational engineers from around the region to help us to do uh, instructor lab training and technical assistance in uh, local languages. And uh, we are looking for more partnership uh, with universities, friends, and others via uh, APAN community. So, that, so that's why you know, we, we, we treasure a lot uh, you know, our uh, relationship, our engagement with uh, APAN. Uh, and our uh, you know, ultimate goal uh, for the training is full certification with full curriculum. Uh, that's all I want to say. Um, Thank you, Marcus. Happy Thank you, Jay Hu. Always appreciate your uh, yours and APNIC's uh, wonderful contribution. Um, and I think uh, Adley and uh, Jamie understate their contributions. They are very active and extremely valued. So thank you. Um, thank you. Let me invite uh, Yunjin from Chainstar CC, who oversee the Asia Connect project. Um, a very valued program of activities. Yunjin, are you there? Yeah. Uh... Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah, okay. Just a minute.
Okay, hello everyone. This is Eunjin uh, from Ten CC. Actually, uh, today it uh, the it was supposed to presented by the executive officer Luis Hyuna Choi, but he's in the engaging in other session, uh, other meeting at the moment. So I will update about the Asia Connect at the APA fifty two. Uh, during this uh, the APA 52, uh, we uh, participated in the uh, 10th of Asia kind of the governance meeting and the project meeting uh, traditionally. And also we support uh, the sponsorship as a gold sponsor for uh, APA 52. Actually, when we meet in the face-to-face -face meeting each other, we usually uh, host for the opening uh, <laughs> opening a uh, reception for APAN people. But uh, unfortunately, we still meet in the virtual meeting. So uh, uh, we sponsor for the APAN 52. And we will also the close uh, collaboration with APAN in the future as well, because uh, APAN and the Asia uh, Connect has uh, a long, long uh, relationship and the traditionally very close uh, collaboration every APAN meeting. So in the 10th of Asia governors meeting, actually it is a close meeting for the Asia Connect governors uh, who are the, uh, composed with uh, each NMRS representatives and uh, uh, relevant uh, the, uh, parties. So uh, this time among the 24 Asia Connect partners, 16 uh, the governors attended and the five uh, steering committee members uh, they participated. In this meeting, we make uh, the very important the decision for the Asia Connect project management, such as the activities and network uh, connectivity, and also the uh, selection of a COFO proposal process and etc. And the uh, 3rd of August and Tuesday, we hold we hold the 10th of Asia Connect project meeting. It was open to all eight pan uh, the part uh, part participation and uh, in this uh, the meeting we updated about the TAIN network and energy updates and the MRAN update uh, who uh, were the, uh, mainly from uh, the, uh, the developing countries like Afghanistan and uh, Bangladesh uh, etc. And also we updated about the Asia Connect sub-granted project. Actually, at the moment, we have a total uh, 67 Asia Connect sub-granted project, but uh, in the considerable limited time, we just shared the three projects. Uh, in the future, we are thinking to make more time for in the project meeting and introduce and share our uh, Asia Connect project uh, the activities. And the 4th of August, there was uh, the admitted assessment on the Asia Connect project and the chaired by the CIMA, uh, uh, CIMA from the NKN of India. Uh, there were the six panelists to share the what NRANS needs for future and the what NRANS needs for uh, the future. Uh, future engagement and the future technologies for uh, benefit to each entrance uh, community and the users. So it was a very fruitful discussion and then uh, the entrance assessment will be very important pillar for Asia Connect project in the future. So I'd like to update about the Asia Connect project with the all APAN community. Actually, a uh, Asia Connect project is supposed to finish as uh, August uh, this year, but uh, they, we extended two years more after the old discussion with the Asia Connect partners, and we got the final approval from the European Commission on the last April. So the Asia Connect project will uh, uh, going on by the August of 2023. And uh, uh, we are also under the discussion with the uh, uh, relevant uh, partners and the European Commission for Beyond the Asia Connect project, because uh, the Beyond the Asia Connect is very important for this community, uh, for the sustainability and the continuation of our research activities and collaboration. So the Tensa uh, CC will uh, close uh, uh, the communication with the all relevant NREM partners and relevant uh, the stakeholders like the governor's level and also European Commission as well. 
And also I'd like to share for the rest of uh, uh, five months of this year, we are uh, planning for uh, the, the fifth of a couple proposal selection. Actually, it, uh, it has started more earlier. And at the moment, we finalized the selection of a concept notes. And then those selected concept notes got informed of their uh, result. And those uh, the selected concept notes proposers will uh, prepare the full uh, the uh, proposers for the final selection. So it will uh, be selected at the at the December of this year. So please uh, keep watching on our uh, website and the Facebook as well, all those uh, uh, channels of uh, our communication. We will share with the, all the APAN community and TAN community as well. Also, uh, we have the enrollment assessment and the enrollment survey in this year. So those, uh, the final report will be uh, released end of uh, August or the latest of September. So this will be also available in our website and the Facebook. So the, any update about the ASIC Connect, we will share through all those web channels. And uh, uh, other else, so we are uh, continuing to international collaboration with the all uh, the RNE community like APA, Giant, Karen, Asrain, Internet to APNIC as well. So the, we will uh, stay together for all those international RNE community bodies. This is uh, my end of a slide. Uh, actually, I want to close uh, my presentation with a special thanks to APAN Secretariat and the APAN 50 Local Committee. Uh, the arranging all those different time zones and programs are tremendous work, but they did a really great job for this week. So I really appreciate for all those staff, all those board the chairs uh, contribution and help. So until we meet each other, please keep well and safe. Thank you. Thank you, Yunjin, greatly appreciate that. And also the kind words, which absolutely I would also endorse. So people have done a wonderful job. Um, let me move on to the next speaker, um, the chair of the IAM Working Group and Task Force, Terry Smith. Terry, are you there? Uh, yes, I am. Thanks, yeah. Marcus. All right. Let me share my screen with you. Uh, screen is yours, as they say. Try that one. So, APAN Identity and Access Management Task Force. Uh, what we did this week, we had um, five days worth of uh, sessions and so forth. Uh, Monday and Tuesday, updates from our Federation operators, and we're seeing solid growth is occurring across the region. Uh, for instance, India's got uh, over 100 identity providers going and uh, have now got four staff running their Federation and have made some significant improvements in their edge of own uh, service. Malaysia now has 29 identity providers and a new staff member and are developing some really uh, fantastic automation tooling to support their members. Uh, Sri Lanka has run a training activity in the past six months to uh, train folk to add services. Uh, Indonesia is also developing tools to support their members and uh, has growth in edge of own. Uh, Japan, they're doing some really interesting work in advanced federations, uh, looking at uh, providing groups, levels of assurance, et cetera. Uh, very focused on research and uh, their edge roam and uh, open roaming deployments uh, continue to uh, move forward. Uh, New Zealand uh, have uh, a new connection options for services and improvements to their infrastructure. Australia, we're running our verification service, uh, really pushing out our hosted IDP solution and uh, still have a very strong research focus. And Thailand, Thailand is uh, joining Edge again. So lots of activity happening in the uh, Federation space. On Wednesday, we had three, uh, six presentations. Um, uh, what's happening to browsers and how it will impact federated identity. It was a, it's a pretty scary uh, talk about uh, how browser um, the developers are trying to solve one problem and possibly creating another. Uh, we had uh, Cephalan or Malaysia talking about their accelerated adoption of identity federation, so some tooling they're building. Uh, Hadaki Goto from Japan gave us a really good update on what's happening with open roaming. Uh, 
we had uh, the UK Federation provide an update on what they're doing, or some experimentation they're doing with Federation sustainability and looking at how to uh, create income from their Federation. And we provided, the AF provided an update on our cloud providing solution. And finally, we finished Wednesday with a review of the iFire project, which is an Asia Connect funded project that uh, we ran over the past 12 months to grow federations uh, in the region. Uh, yesterday and today, we ran some training, uh, how to connect to and join Edge again, um, the International Service uh, Federation of Federation. Uh, we covered everything from what is Edge again to running as a fully operational offering to Federation subscribers. Uh, we had great participation across the five days and a big thumbs up to the uh, APAN 52. It was a great event for us. That's, that's me done. Wonderful. Thank you, Terry. Um, it's a phenomenal number of sessions you've been running this week. Great to I see you. Yeah. <laughs> but for the others that don't speak the Australian vernacular, it means that he's fairly tired. Yeah, exactly. All right. Let me, thank you, Terry. Let me move on to the next working group. Um, and we do need to move fairly quickly. Jong Hoon Moon talking about the APRP working group activities. Jong Hoon, are you, you there? If not, I'm not hearing you. If you have any technology problems. You are talking about the medical working group? No, the APRP. Oh, sorry for that. That's okay. Uh, he's there, Marcus. I'm trying to get him to unmute. That's right. I might just move on to the next one in the interest of time. He can have a go in a second. Um, Farida. Are you available to talk about the e-culture working group then? Yes, yes, yes. Hi. Please go uh, ahead. Okay, all right. Let me share my screen. Okay. Do you see the screen? Hold on. Yes, I see the screen. Okay. All right. Um, we are still in the mood of Olympics, right? So e-culture working group met on the 3rd of August. Um, and we had our meeting. Uh, we had six presentations uh, that was unexpected. So we had only one session. So our session um, got added on by a good 40 minutes, but that was good. So we have two main topics, digital cultural heritage. We had two speakers. Chao Yi So um, shared her PhD research findings on digital application in rock art were recording in Kinta Valley, Para, uh, Malaysia, West Malaysia. And then um, that was really interesting. Uh, and we had Safia Najia Suhaimi. She looked at her exploratory mm -hmm. uh, project, youth exploration of Malaysian cultural identity in local brands. And then we moved on to the second topic, which was teaching and learning. So we had four speakers. Uh, Tosh Yamamoto um, presented a progress report on his project that he shared with uh, two other researchers from Taiwan and Singapore, curriculum and learning, environment development for global liberal arts education in cooperative future work skills with a focus on social entrepreneurship in the realm of SDGs. Okay, and then we had um, Asadu Zaman from Bangladesh, uh, University of Dhaka. He looked at media dependency in disaster, a study on digital media usage of Dhaka dwellers during COVID-19 pandemic. And he said uh, it almost doubled the number of people using um, you know, uh, this uh, network. And so far he said, no problem. So it looks good for the next APEN. <laughs> uh, we had uh, Zainaru Rahman, she was um, presenting to us this new setup that she did, teaching online meeting meetup, which uh, you know is um, shortened to Tom, and COVID nineteen transitioning from blended learning to online hybrid learning. And uh, finally, we had Nadine. Oh, I forgot my screen. Okay, there you are. Um, and then we had Nadine. 
uh, who was uh, who's also from Monash, and it's an important um, topic that she brought in, which is online intercultural training. Uh, from challenges to opportunities, sometimes when we do online teaching, we forget the fact that you know we are still communicating interculturally. All right, and then next, um, more importantly, we had our. Let me see. How do I go to the next one? Our. Oops, oops, it's not going. Hold on. Um, our elections and okay, there we are. So welcome back, Andrew, as our senior co-chair. And then we have three new co-chairs uh, from all parts of the world. We have Tosh Yamamoto from Japan. We have Zainal Rahman, who is actually based in Australia. And we have Safia Nadja Suhaimi. With the new team, we hope that we are going to bring um, different new topics um, you know, uh, next time. And then uh, some things that we discussed was actually um, uh, uh, Andrew uh, actually um, did an update on our uh, Asia uh, Connect uh, project. We're still wondering, uh, we're still waiting. We hope that we can go on. And I'm glad to say that we um, were invited by this particular journal, International Journal of Digital Culture and, uh, let me see, and Electronic Tourism for the speakers in eCulture to submit a full paper um, and they, might, uh, they will be reviewed for the journal. Um, and then I think after that, uh, after that, I think we are done actually. We are done, yes. So these are our new co-chairs. We have four. Uh, this time I hope um, we, are more, we are more energized to present in the next APEN. Thank you very much. Thank you, Farida. Thank you. Um, let me pass on to Eric Yen, who will be talking about the Disaster Mitigation Working Group and the AP Grid PMA. Eric. You're good to go? Yes. Go ahead, please. Thank you. Actually, I have two, uh, two summaries of, of two uh, activities at APN50. Let's start it from the uh, uh, summary of the Disaster Mitigation Working Group. Uh, two sessions uh, arranged on August 3rd, and uh, we have about uh, 30 participants. <clears throat> The uh, format of the sessions are uh, a bit different from uh, uh, before previous activities. In this time, uh, we arranged a master talk <coughs> delivered by Professor uh, Lin Chan Yao from Taiwan, uh, talking about the uh, uh, correlation between the air quality deterioration and typhoon in considering the uh, topographic features based on the uh, cases in Taiwan. And then uh, the status of the original collaboration uh, is the same as uh, every activities at APA meetings. So the status was updated by, uh, by LPN. And we have a uh, report uh, from Professor Liu <coughs> from Malaysia about the uh, uh, new, uh, <coughs> the call. <coughs> uh, the uh, uh, concept notes submitted to the new uh, Asia Connect call. So we have a, uh, a, a report about this new uh, a proposal to continue the uh, regional collaboration, supporting the uh, capacity building. Uh, <clears throat> and then we have a uh, summary report from uh, <clears throat> a director uh, Sutat of HII in Thailand. And that's a, uh, a milestone project uh, also funded by Asia Connect. Uh, that's the collaboration between the uh, agriculture community and also the disaster uh, mitigation co community. So that's also one of the uh, focus we've been uh, uh, emphasized in recent years uh, on the uh, collaboration between disaster mitigation, agriculture, etc. Try to extend in the uh, this kind of uh, across di discipline collaborations and. <clears throat> In the uh, uh, regional collaboration updates, a, <clears throat> the participation to the European funded e-science projects as a disaster mitigation content center is always a, uh, uh, a primary supporting force for these regional collaborations. Uh, because of these content centers, uh, <clears throat> we can uh, enhance the regional services and infrastructure to support all the activities. And from this year, from uh, 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 
2021, uh, there's a new phase of these projects and uh, <clears throat> moving uh, towards a open science under the uh, umbrella of European Open Science Cloud. That's the new project uh, called EGIS for the Advanced Computing Environment. <clears throat> so uh, uh, still we are part of this as a, 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 a data space uh, focusing on disaster mitigation and also agriculture. And the other thing, as I mentioned, that uh, we like to uh, keep extending the collaboration among working groups in APEN. Started from agriculture working group, disaster mitigation working group, and now we are <clears throat> uh, very closely working with the uh, uh, open and sharing data working group. <clears throat> so this kind of uh, collaborations uh, uh, inside APEN will go on based on the uh, 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 <clears throat> credit project, as I mentioned, uh, the outcome experiences, and also the, the requirements from our partners. So that's the uh, summary from the disaster mitigation working group. Uh, can I go on to the uh, AP3 PMA? Please, yes. Okay, thank you. The other activity in this week is about AP3 PMA. As you know, AP3 PMA is a building the global trust fabric as part of the international global trust framework, IGTF. In the beginning, <clears throat> the uh, uh, Federation of the Certificate Authority in Asia, uh, we are providing the uh, certificate for, uh, <clears throat> for a an end user for the host and also for, for services. Uh, <clears throat> started from the uh, high energy physics experiment. Uh, over the past, almost 20 years now the services has been extended uh, beyond the uh, particle physics communities uh, so uh, in many countries they are <clears throat> supporting uh, different types of user communities and in the meeting <clears throat> uh, we have only one session yesterday uh, we have six production ca out of nine in asia were present and update their status they are hpcica from japan running by nii uh, Hong Kong University CA, uh, I have CA, sorry, uh, typo here, uh, from Chinese Academy of Science, uh, KEK CA from Japan, AGC CA from Taiwan, and also MyFEN CA uh, from Malaysia. Uh, unfortunately, MyFEN CA decided to be decommissioned uh, from this year. So uh, the primary activities uh, this week is about the uh, updates of each CA. <clears throat> Usually we have a self ordinary report from each certificate authority, at least once uh, a year. So uh, <clears throat> most of the CA this time, they provide their uh, up, uh, status update. We have a new chair election and also uh, <clears throat> uh, HPCICA and I also share their uh, ideas for building new AI based on the uh, uh, Gagunin and the, uh, uh, <clears throat> the major directions in the future is that most of the CA are mig migrating to token-based AI to make the uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, single sign-on or the uh, identity federation access uh, more easier <clears throat> to enable the smooth, smooth interoperability between uh, research and education and also the, the infrastructure parties. Uh, also try to uh, engage uh, the user community with the uh, AI framework in a uh, global uh, scope. So that's my summary of the two activities. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Greatly appreciate that. Um, I know that the medical doctors are always incredibly busy. So let me invite um, Dr. Moriyama-san to present on the medical working group. Okay, hello everyone. This is Dr. Tomoshita Moriyama, a new chair of medical working group. So. I'd like to introduce our activity in the SEPA meeting. Okay, right. These are the activities in this SEPA 52. <laughs> Started uh, at medical research and ended by a day working workshop. Uh, as you can see, uh, many programs have been held in our medical working group sessions. Uh, with a variety of medical fields, such as technology, rural healthcare, surgery, endoscopy, cardiology, ophthalmology, and fetal diagnosis. 
In total, 12 sessions was held and also two workshops we enjoyed. And around 130 sites in 31 countries were connected by Zoom. Many speakers and discussants and chairs joined and enjoyed our fruitful discussions. Uh, numerous number of uh, institutes joined from all over the world, and not only in uh, Asia, but also from other areas, such as uh, Central Asian countries, uh, Latin, or something like that. And via FUBA, uh, the platform this 8.51, uh, more than around 350 participants joined and watched our discussion. These are the photos of our sessions. The left top is endoscopy chair conference. The topic was AI. So the AI is quite good affinity with an image diagnosis. So the white, now AI is widespread spreading in endoscopic field for detecting a neoplastic lesion and also making a characterization of these lesions. So the uh, famous endoscopist and also the uh, leader of this field, this field uh, made a presentation on the advanced equipment in this field. And the right top is hepatopancreatic biliary surgery sessions. Many Japanese doctors made a presentation as, about the tips or a new procedure of this area. And left bottom is a rural healthcare session uh, coordinated by Nepal team. Uh, the topic was how to tackle with COVID-19 pandemic in rural area. Uh, they have they uh, showed us so uh, what they have done for preventing medical staff from uh, this pandemic and also how to take care of the patient. The right bottom is technology session. The Indonesian guy made a presentation on the advanced modality for the education especially for medical students. So during these uh, programs, we enjoyed and also had a very fruitful discussion. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Moriyama-san. Um, it's amazing the amount of content in the medical stream uh, for people that have not noticed. They are every day, full day from beginning to the end of the day and continuing after the General Assembly. Uh, let me invite next uh, Dr. jong Hun Moon to talk about the APRP working group activities this week. Are you then? What? Yeah, he's sharing. We can't hear you though. Professor Moon, can you hear us? Can you send audio? I might need to still fix something. Let me move on then. Um, uh, Kasahara-san, are you available to talk about the security working group? Oh. Uh, uh, yes. Hmm? Can you hear me? I can. Um, uh, Professor Moon, can you stop sharing, please, till we get your, thank you. Okay, uh, can you see my slide? Yes, I can. Okay, uh, I'm Yoshiaki Kasahara from Kyushu University, Japan. I'm a chair of our APAN Security Working Group. And we, are, we have two other co-chairs, Rakesh-san from India and Jaymin-san from Ethnic. Uh, first, uh, uh, initially we planned to have two sessions, uh, two 19-minute sessions, but unfortunately I couldn't uh, gather enough uh, speakers this time, so I have to cancel the second session. I'm sorry about that. And uh, we have, uh, usually we have uh, uh, presentation sessions during every APA meeting. And this time we have three presentations from, one from Japan and two from India this time. Uh, I think uh, based on the FUBA, uh, the participant is around 30, 30 and I think, you uh, by Zoom, I saw in around 20 uh, uh, audience joined. And first uh, presentation was 
by uh, Professor Ochai of uh, University of Tokyo, and he is running an uh, international collaboration project. Uh, he is uh, uh, how can I say, uh, giving a uh, small uh, proving device to some countries, uh, local area network, gather information and find, try to find suspicious uh, network activities. And he uh, presented the current uh, prog uh, progress of his research. Unfortunately, due to this COVID-19, his uh, deployment is suspended uh, because he preferred to meet in person with the participant to pass the uh, device and explain that function directly. So I hope in, in near future of APA meeting, he will come to the APA meeting in person, uh, physically, and then uh, he can pass the device and continue deployment and proceed his research. Uh, next one is from India. Uh, she is a, doc, a student of uh, co-chair uh, Rakesh-san. And her presentation was, uh, first part was uh, the large uh, collection of summary of uh, security issue and uh, uh, prevention about 5G and other wireless network technology. And the uh, latter part was uh, some interesting idea of using artificial rain to uh, uh, attack the net wireless network. Uh, so third one was also from India, uh, Dr. Gupta. Uh, of Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology India, and uh, he presented the history and summary of uh, last two decades of sec cyber security and digital forensics, and some insight of uh, future technology and uh, other things of digital forensics. I think his presentation contains many uh, possible opportunity of research and development and uh, recording stopped. And I think this presentation Recording in progress. is available in four, but I, I think uh, it is not ready yet, but I, I think it will be available soon. So Recording if stopped. Are, if you are interested, please check this. And uh, I will, we will have a uh, similar presentation and session. Recording in, in progress. Next APAM meeting. Uh, so please consider uh, uh, to join the, or uh, propose a presentation if you have any interesting topic about security. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Harasan, and apologies for those recording gremlins. Um, Dr. Moon, can we hear your audio yeah, now? I, yes, I'm okay. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Yes, let me start. Yes, nice to meet you. So, uh, I'm Jung Moon uh, from Case in Korea, and working for this APRP working group and uh, the session reporting now. Uh, the, our working group, the APRP, is meeting its uh, Asia Pacific Research Platform working group. Is uh, our the aim is to deploy the science DMZ to deploy the Asian areas as uh, the big data super highway. And so we have three uh, the major topics is to promote the HPC ecosystem in Asia Pacific region and uh, to engage APAN members in the Asian countries. And finally, toward the setting up on the Asia Pacific research platform and become a part of the global research platform. And uh, at this time is uh, we have two sessions and uh, 10 speakers from six countries. And we, and also is so we uh, have two sessions, the keynote speech is uh, uh, the from one is the Eve Pops and the second one is Jordi Ross Gerard. And the, the research at the speed of thought of golden age of the global RNA community the, by the Eve Pops. And the second one is using the battle structure to accelerate the network performance by Jordi. And our the general attendees is over the 30 attendees. And our uh, the the country, our content is the country of this is Korea, Australia, and the Singapore, Pakistan, and the Malaysia, ISM, and uh, the global trend. 
And our the tech, uh, the session tools, including the technical issues, is, uh, the RNA together research platform development and by the Kiyong Kim the, from Korea. And the second one is using bottling the structure to accelerate network performance and Jordi by, uh, uh, by Jordi uh, from the US and uh, 100 giga DTN cluster over KIST science TMD uh, by uh, Hong Won Tech uh, from KIST. Uh, they unfortunately, uh, the we uh, the past uh, the ASEA the connect project is a concept note as a name of this APRP working group. And the next round is we will try to uh, the make the proposal and the, to how can uh, the expanded to our uh, members countries the science TNG is uh, at the building and the using something like that yeah that is my uh the reporting thank you thank you very much Professor Moon. thank you also for your patience um can i invite virchai to the stage please talk about the open data open and sharing data and the CRADR. Okay, can you see my screen? Uh, yes, I can. Okay, I'll start with this. Uh, uh, the CLADA that the, we had uh, uh, project under with the agricultural working group and then the, with the disaster mitigation working group that we got this uh, funded uh, from uh, Asia Connect. Unfortunately, this time that the uh, agricultural working group uh, doesn't have it. So next time we'll try to make it. So uh, the outcome of this uh, collaboration uh, project is that we train 190 participants in 12 countries. We have more of this because of uh, the participants from ASEAN uh, country member. And then we trying to get more women involved and we success to have that, that the, we get 50%, more than 50% women uh, to, to participate. And then we had uh, one session of the, the summary and discussion, what uh, we, ha we had achieved. And uh, in the past six months, we got the project supposed to be one year, but with the uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic, it's a uh, twin to six months. So, and everything has to be changed to be online. So, uh, and then the very successful one, I, uh, we, we think, I don't know that what the uh, other people would say. And we agree that we, we, we would submit to get a second phase uh, for Major Connect when, when uh, the opportunity is uh, open again. And that's it. Uh, and we, uh, we, we, we try to engage more ASEAN members to get involved. Uh, in in this uh, uh, bro both agricultural working group, uh, disaster mitigation working group, and the second phase of this uh, project, if we if we could get the funding. Okay. And the open and sharing data uh, working group is uh, we had uh, five sessions, and we it's two days. Uh, the third and the fourth of August, and we have uh, ten honorable speakers from uh, Australia, Japan, India, Taiwan, Thailand, UK, and UNESCO. And after that, the last session we dedicated like ninety uh, minutes, the whole session to discuss what we would like to do. And the thing is that uh, we realized that this. Uh, the problem, the common problem we have, that the uh, the data sharing problem with the research. So we set our main goal that we would like to achieve to improve research uh, data sharing and reduce information access pain, is uh, by increasing the informatics and or if possible data sharing culture, which that. We hope that among researchers within APAN can reach uh, data for the research easier. So we need 
uh, collaboration from uh, all the working groups on this. Uh, and we, we point out five points, initiatives that we need to do. So each of these will become work packets for the working group with their own plans or for the support and implementation. So first, we would like to raise awareness, support capacity building and the undertaking need, analysis of open data standard and sharing services. But we will start it within Asia Pacific first and through working with uh, working groups and uh, NRENs in the region. But uh, we will need to to discuss further through the uh, mailing list or what uh, whatever uh, media we, we, we would uh, have. And then we would like to support uh, the provision of data discovery. This is uh, uh, proposed by the Kasu Sang that is it easier to do first before we move to other and we start uh, maybe to have a repository and uh, associate services that we could provide uh, working with the interested discipline. We have we, we already have guidelines on this, but we need to to get the contact, uh, well further information from from Onami Sang that uh, Kasu Sang said that the National Informatics Institute of Japan already developed some, so we will be wait for that. Uh, we would like to establish a framework of data standard interoperability and the best practices in Asia Pacific region, uh, including metrics of maturity and to share existing international guidelines and standards. Okay, we might be, we don't need to really do the new one, but we, we, we try to share the existing one. And this will help provide a forum for the stronger regional collaboration around open data across the region. Uh, collaborate with uh, similar platforms and groups. Uh, perhaps we could work with the UNGGIMAP, uh, UNESCO, GODAN, RDA, to ensure that the global collaboration is fully supported. Okay. And then we have to, one thing that we need to start with that we have to identify our contacts for each country or NREN that who really, well, not only just contacts, who really uh, can access and know how to access the research data locally and in the different discipline community uh, is also willing to work with us to, to make this work because sometimes when you get the contact uh, person and it's very difficult to get information from, from, from the person we have. So we need to really identify this. And uh, next time in APAN 52, we agree that uh, we would uh, try to invite speaker and keep some uh, good, good practice from each country uh, or from NREN to show how it works. And then we undertake deeper discussion after that we, we will have a, again, long discussion and into the need so we can focus more on what kind of uh, data or research or discipline or whatever you need that we can uh, have to really focus on. And then we need to engage with the working groups to identify the priority issue, needs and wishes. And then we explore sharing activity with RDA. Uh, yesterday, some, uh, well, most of you uh, should uh, listen to to don't remember her name, Jennifer, I think, or something. Uh, the, uh, she's, she's open for, 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 for the work with everybody. So we will engage that. And then the, we will include the training and the workshop, uh, perhaps in the APAN 53. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Virachai. Um, moving on quickly, Brooke, talk about the common end range information model. Yep. Oh. Okay, so uh, we had a BOF on, uh, on Monday evening, Australian time, uh, and on the uh, common and random information model. Um, hmm. Go to the next slide. Oh, there, that away. Okay. Uh, so, um, as you can see, like, so the common and random information model was an attempt to simplify and disaggregate the, the compendium data sets so there would be contribution from. Uh, around the globe, aggregated up to a, a global compendium. Uh, Marcus was on the committee that started in 2009, uh, and that resulted in uh, Red Clara producing a compendium for its region for a period of time. 
um, and Azren um, made, a, made a document as well in the middle of that period when they uh, joined the collaboration. Um, but as you can see, uh, the compendium has sort of uh, waned as, as a service. Um, and uh, but we did hear from uh, uh, Engine that uh, there will be a, a 2021 edition. So the 2018 Asia Connect Compendium will be updated uh, and released in, in by September. So uh, that's good news. So there is at least some progress still happening here. But the only other version that exists is uh, the the Giant Compendium, um, except that has become uh, very European focused of recent. Um, so really, the summary. The BOF was well attended. Hoover gives us different stats on 55 attending, 39 watched. I saw a maximum of 21 people sort of uh, in, in, the, uh, in the event. So I don't know how those um, are accounted. Um, we, yeah, I, I previously at that BOF missed that Azren had made an effort in uh, 2012. Um, there was a call, you know, the, the routing BOF believed that the, uh, exposing some of this data would make it available. Uh, would be useful to them. So there's some good news there. Um, but also we reflected on the fact that we need to make this data, you know, uh, available and valuable to those that contribute it. Because if there's not any value in, uh, in providing uh, information about the, the, your own NREN, uh, then it will wane again and it will disappear as it, as it has in other regions or at least never, never um, realized useful results. Um, so there's lots of metrics that an NREN uh, can be measured against, uh, and the focus will be on um, automatable uh, qualitative metrics rather than a survey of uh, qualitative data in the, in the first instance. And I think there seemed to be some interest, so potentially value in, a, in taking a charter forward. Um, but I think, you know, maybe working with the routing, um, the routing BOF and uh, reflecting on the results that come out of the uh, September uh, publication of the compendium would be the, the the next best pause moment, which isn't that far away, on whether we uh, look at um, constituting a, a task force and uh, and inviting more people to participate in the lead up to uh, APAN 53. Thank you, Marcus. Thank you, Brooke. Um, let me invite Jennifer Schopf next to talk about the routing buff. Thank you, Marcus. Share here. Right. So the routing BOF um, has talked about having a charter with two focus areas, one in engineering focus, where we document possible erroneous routes and identify teams to address them and, and check in. And we actually walked through four or five possible erroneous routes as part of the, the meeting we had earlier this week. Um, it would also have a policy focus where we work together to publish routing policies for different circuits and paths, including the preferred backups, and then verify if those uh, policies are being followed. A number of participants chimed in about how challenging this was and, and how the need for this, uh, because of how routes have changed over the year and added capacity has made this a very complicated setting. Um, our next steps, we're, we're asking APAN to make us a real working group. We have a charter in hand. Um, the group will still continue to meet regardless. We've got a meeting actually in about two weeks where we're going to walk through the progress of some of these identified unusual routes. Um, in early September, we're having a talk by Steve Wallace about manners, um, which is very closely tied to routing policy. And then in October, we'll try to have another tool talk probably about looking glasses, which is another technique to understand routes. Um, we've got a mailing list set up. It's part of GNAG, but we use the APAN Slack channel. Um, we've got a web page set up as well. And three co-chairs, please get in touch with any of us if you'd like to join in. Um, it, this group got referred to in a number of different working group sessions because I think these are problems that many NRANs or circuit providers are dealing with. Um, as we've added capacity, data is not flowing where we think it should be flowing. So thank you. 
Thank you, Jennifer. Delightfully quick, and also appreciate that it's uh, 4 a.m. your time, so you're doing remarkably well. Um, slight juggling on the schedule. Can I invite uh, Dr. Chen Mei Shah to talk about his workshop on uh, online interactive teaching? Uh, you're currently muted, sir. Dr. Shah? And you are still muted. Yes, I can see your screen. Thank you very much, Shabha, for being generous to me. Uh, so, thank you very much, Shabha, and for giving us an opportunity to share our views. And the work of making that this morning. Um, we're having trouble hearing you, Dr. Shah. Can you bring your microphone closer, please? Yeah, again now? Now can you hear? That, that's a bit better, thank you. Uh, okay. So, the workshop on making last week's online team interactive. There were three sessions. One was in first order, and the second was in the morning time that week. And what you guys said, uh, as we progress further in uh, teaching methodology, right now the students are most focused on system and learning. And we are focusing on online teaching interactive because in post COVID era, uh, people are more uh, learning and teaching online. And what we are trying to analyze is what different methodology which is offline, how it is going to be online. It has a, a team which we have demonstrated and requested by the participants that we are there at Saiti, Lake Ocean, and Same way, people uh, from scoring their Kahoot, property. So these are the matters by which uh, we can uh, use the monitoring and create engagement and engagement. For a technology team, we can have an online team like uh, the research group, online option, analytics, and more than that. These are the two matters uh, which uh, we have done in the hands-on exercise with the students, uh, participants, and they are all engaged. In fact, we have also touched uh, upon the social media system because all students like on social media, so how we can use their interest for our Finally, it was three sessions uh, by around 50 class students, and I think that's to find the city for allowing us to share with you. Thank you, Marcus. Thank you. We are open for this. Thank you, Dr. Shah. Um, we had still some technology issues hearing you there, but we've got your slides and we may get you to write some notes for us. Um, can I invite, let me just check, uh, Dr. Song, Wang Chul Song, to talk about the AI-driven networks. Yep. Go ahead, please. Thank you. Mm, just a minute. Can you see my uh, slide? Yes, I can. Thank you. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, I'm uh, Wang Chiu Song, uh, 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 chair of uh, the AI Driven Networks Working Group. Uh, uh, I would like to report about our first sessions uh, of our working group. Actually, uh, it is our first event after our uh, approval. Uh, our working group's goal is uh, like that. And then uh, our uh, coaches are uh, three uh, colleagues, uh, including me, uh, uh, including uh, me. Then the, uh, Dr. Hideza Nagano uh, is from uh, NIST, uh, Professor Huang Jiaong uh, from uh, BUPT uh, China. Uh, first, uh, working groups, the st statistics are uh, as follows. Uh, uh, we have uh, we had two sessions uh, uh, on uh, uh, August the fourth. The first session uh, chair was uh, uh, made by Dr. Hideo Nagano, and second session was chaired by uh, Professor Huang Jiaong. Uh, we had eight presentations, and uh, we uh, we had uh, uh, many attendants. Uh, the first session had, uh, had uh, seven, seventy-six attendants. Uh, the second session had uh, 35 uh, five 
uh, attendance. So, uh, as I said, we had uh, uh, eight presentations, and uh, the first station had uh, four presentations. The, uh, the first speaker was from ESNet uh, USA. Uh, Marianne, uh, she talked on ML-based data-driven prediction of network status in model-based and uh, model-free approaches. The second speaker was from uh, Chinese Academy of Science, China. Uh, he talked on uh, AI-driven congestion control. Uh, the, the third speaker was from uh, NIST Japan. Uh, he talked on AI-assisted did uh, resource control and management for server virtualization infrastructures with uh, introduction to their server project. The first speaker was uh, from our university, Jeju National University and Korean Forum, uh, Korea. Uh, the AFAC, uh, 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 he uh, talked on uh, anomaly, anomaly detection system on Korean with uh, experimental result. Uh, the following is uh, the second session. Uh, the second, uh, uh, the second session. The first presentation was made by uh, KTI uh, Kim Hyung-woo. Uh, he talked on their autonomous network they developed. It was explained that to be able to monitor traffic and detect network failure at current IP backbone network. Uh, the second speaker uh, was also from Tsinghua University, China. They explained their method to mitigate the impact of microburst traffic by data-driven uh, data driven routing. But uh, interesting point was that uh, it is not based on uh, SDN-based networks. Uh, he had done experiments on routing in the uh, distributed manner of the uh, traditional network model. The third speaker uh, was from GIST Korea. Uh, she explained their uh, framework as a DDoS uh, generator based on their smart box on uh, Korean. The final speaker was from uh, University of Malaya, uh, Malaysia. Uh, he talked on smart traffic engineering by designing their ML-based um, uh, traffic uh, prediction method. Uh, those are our presentation. Uh, our presentations. Also, uh, these screen uh, uh, these are the screenshots uh, captured during the sessions. Uh, uh, that's all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Song. Um, can I invite Dr. Idris Suleiman to talk about e-research infrastructure and COVID nineteen? Idris, are you there? Hearing or seeing you? Not seeing or hearing you. We may come back to you. Um, Torrit from BD Ren, um, are you available to talk about the IPv6 research project? Yeah, thank you, Marcus. Please go ahead. Let me share my slide. Although I committed Liana that I will go with extempore, but I found everybody is showing their slides. So it might humiliate Sarnet because they organized this session. So I have the responsibility to lift them up. Okay, sure thank you. Thank it. you for giving me the floor. So this was a session on joint IPv6 project. As you all know, it's one of the biggest project in in terms of number of organizations, 23 organizations are there from 14 different countries. So they organized sessions in APAN 50 and in APAN 51, but those were a little bit on the project update and to initiate the project. But this session was particularly very interesting because in terms of all technicalities, we had a session which was mingling with little bit technical, mostly legal issues. So it had three presentations. The first one was technical, that was project update by Professor Chen King An, an associate professor from Tsinghua University, China. 
and she presented the current status of the project, the challenges that we are facing, and the roadmap of the project. The sorry, I want to So the issue that came up that with even with COVID-19, the project is moving smoothly. There is no impact on the strategy, neither on the strategies or on the roadmap. So we are moving fine with the project. We have already applied for ISIF funding. If that comes up, then probably the project will be a little bit strengthened. And the second presentation was from Dr. Pardis Muslim Jadi Tehrani. She presented on global governance and regulatory framework of cyberspace. A very, very interesting presentation it was. She highlighted the framing of cyber laws in curbing the cyber terrorism and cyber attacks. So it came out from the session that we have two international laws at the moment, international law and international private law. International law is, and is handles mainly to deal issues between countries and international private law it's more personal, it deals with the personal issues. It was found that, or it was revealed, or it was the uh, comment of the presenter that it is better to customize the existing laws that are there, international laws and international private laws to frame cyber laws, to curb cyber threats, cyber terrorism, then to go for framing the cyber laws from scratch. Because the technology, it is proactive. Legal issues, they cannot be proactive. If anything happens, then legal issues come. If anything new happens, then legal issues, they need to frame new laws, new regulations to curb that in future. That's why considering the pretext, it is better to customize international law, international private law to deal with cyber threats and cyber crimes. Then the last presentation, which was on data sovereignty and global internet governance, that was the most interesting topic I found there because data sovereignty, if you know that it deals with human privacy. So privacy, it was found from the presentation that only data sovereignty can protect your privacy. So two concepts were discussed. One was defensive mode, one was expansionary mode. I don't want to go into the details of that, but eventually it was made crystal clear that data sovereignty is important, is crucial to protect privacy, but at the same time, without economic sovereignty, data sovereignty is implementation of data sovereignty is really questionable. Another important thing that came out from the discussion that why data privacy is important. Many people say that I don't need any privacy because I have nothing to hide, but that's not true. Everybody has something to hide, believe me, because data privacy, it is quoted that data privacy gives people the right to be imperfect. And nobody in this world is perfect. Nobody can claim that. So that was the nicest takeaway from his presentation. And finally, we, the technocrats, we, leave the, we left the session with some positive notes because there is a proverb in the industry that technocrats turn into legal experts can deal the issues related with cyber crimes better than traditional legal experts. So that was all in the session. Sorry, I have some snapshots I could collect. So these are the snapshots, around 40 participants were there. And that's all. Thank you, Marcus. Thank you, Torad, appreciate that. Um, Andrew Howard, are you there and able to talk about the backbone session? Mm 
I'm presenting uh, on behalf of Eves, uh, Bob, um, the Backbone Committee Forum. Uh, this is the first session since ACAN 48 in Putrajaya. Uh, the primary goal was to provide additional RE and subsea cable update, uh, followed by a discussion of how to evolve the Backbone Committee going forward. It was agreed to keep the subsea cable capacity up. It was agreed that the subsea cable capacity update was most desirable as it is of great help in setting the strategic orientation for the further, further evolution of the growing international r and backbone infrastructure. The interconnected APONET, EAR ring, ANA plus to Northern, plus to North to South America, South America to Europe and South Africa and to Europe, as well as the South Africa to Europe connections based on multi-stakeholder cost shared links based increasingly in 10 to 15 year IRUs with agreements for mutual backup, transit and overflow routes, make the GREN much more carrier-like with the need to formalise multilateral backup arrangements, as well as paying closer attention to routing and routing policy. The creation of adopt and adoption of an APAN routing working group, as well as a GNA under GNAG, are great and essential steps in that direction. Further discussion will be required as to the redefinition and future role of the Backbone Committee with eventual new charter to more closely complement uh, other working group and committee activities. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. A neat summary. Um, Konishi-san, the Network Engineering Working Group. Okay, I would like to start. Please go ahead. Okay. Can you show my slide? No? I, I can see your slides. I can see your slide. Can I, okay? Can yep. I start the report? Please go ahead, thank you. Okay. And uh, uh, we had a workshop, uh, two days workshop, but uh, and the total session is uh, four, and uh, all presentation material are uh, on the already on the websites of the program, and uh, you can see uh, this URL: http www.jpa.net meetings twenty one zero eight id high id index html. If you can visit these pages, you can get the presentation material as, a, as well as a program. And we had a four, four sessions. The first session is already Chief Chen made explanation. He's one of the manager of the uh, Arena Park project led by Epinic and White projects. And this is a session network plan. And uh, uh, Japan, Philippines, Indonesia, and Thailand are uh, uh, delegates made a presentation. Now currently, uh, Japan, Philippines, Indonesia, three uh, and Guam, three uh, countries are uh, or uh, being co already connected uh, will be connected soon. And uh, uh, Thailand is not decided yet, but uh, they hope uh, to be a member of area Arena Park. And uh, probably uh, Arena Park people and uh, Thailand will make a discussion how to realize a connection. And the second session is a network history, status, and plan. Uh, Professor Akira Kato, Japan, uh, chair the session. He is a member of White Project. The White Project is working with Epinic for Arena Park. That's why 
uh, this uh, session we will focus uh, Helena Park too, uh, but uh, the other uh, one EU delegate EU uh, uh, David West of Giant uh, is a you know reader of, was a reader of Helena uh, you know Asia Connect or Tain Network, and uh, he made a presentation. Uh, at uh, this session, Net, um, basically network history and future collaboration, he emphasizes. And uh, the third session is Warwick Mitchell, Australia. Uh, and uh, he is one of the, the member, one of the chair of, you know, routing working both, led by Jennifer, United of the United States. And the, the third question is a network plan and technologies. Uh, United States, China, Japan, Korea, and uh, made a presentation. The total presentation is uh, 18. And the last session, fourth session, is was chaired by Patch Lee uh, of 10CC Korea. Uh, this means in this workshop, uh, I think, you know, collaboration between Arena Park and TEN Network, our Asia Connect program, are quite important for us in future. That's why I asked uh, Chief Wu to chair the session, and also I asked Patch Lee to chair the session of APAN meeting. The third uh, slide is, you no. Know, uh, Lessons run. Arena Park new uh, is a backbone network, new backbone, grand new backbone network. And uh, uh, they will use to uh, IRU circuit for a long time, for 15 years or something. And uh, in this uh, topic, is a cost sharing uh, model and NRN uh, should pay for the backhole circuit between cable landing station and NRN node. Uh, in some countries, backhole circuits are very long, very long. For example, 1,000 kilometers and, uh, and very expensive in some countries. That's why uh, cost sharing, uh, in this case, is not so easy for NRN to pay for uh, all the backhole circuits. Two possible solutions uh, to overcome the difficulties. One is uh, selecting the cable system near the NRA central road or operating center or something. And, uh, and uh, the other solution is uh, you know, new NRA or Arena Park international node uh, will be set up near the cable landing station. Uh, this will uh, happen in Indonesia. From uh, the Indonesia, um, ID then uh, 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 has an operation center in the ITB University, but uh, the cable landing station is uh, far from ITB, for about 1,000 kilometers. That's why new uh, international node will be set up. And now they are working for a new uh, central road, new uh, new uh, node for the international circuits. And uh, the, the first one is no. In case of Thailand, Thailand will have a new cable systems, and that uh, cable landing station will be about one hundred kilometers from the uh, capital. And the second session, you know, extend uh, the member of RNI network based on VPN, with Vietnam uh, speaker made a presentation uh, about the uh, no, new uh, you know, what was the technology uh, of VPN to extend the members. members. And the third, uh, two, uh, second session, you know, pandemic challenges with uh, 
running system, running management system, or Zoom, Sri Lanka people, uh, there are many traffic over Zoom in to, for the remote lectures. And uh, uh, let's run for slideshow, is possible? Okay. And uh, the uh, second session also, we uh, had uh, no next phase planning for India. NKN uh, made a presentation and next, at the next workshop, they will clearly ex explain about the new program. Uh, NKN had a history about, uh, I don't know exactly about 10 years, seven, several years, but they made a very good achievement and they are going to get a um, better fund, you know, for the next phase program. That's why please expect that presentation at the next workshop. She was very you know, uh, positive to make a presentation at the next workshop. And uh, fourth, you know, two and four, building a long-term human collaboration that critical for the members and the regional David West of Giant was a program director of the TAIN program. And uh, he has a long, he has a history to work uh, for many international program in Giant. And he's, he believes uh, long-term collaboration, in order to realize long-term collaborations, human relation is the most important. This is a one, he's not an engineer, but he's, he has the experience to organize and uh, a successful uh, project of pain, for example. And the third session, uh, Jennifer made a presentation, not uh, just a uh, network, but more uh, tracking users and needs and performance check are critical uh, for the next phase. Uh, pro uh, network. And, uh, the third, uh, next, uh, you know, Cindy of uh, Tsinghua University, uh, Sanet, uh, made a good presentation. And he said, you know, IPv6 only network will be realized by 2030 in nine years. And uh, he has uh, also explained about the next phase, PT, future internet infrastructure programs. And, and uh, uh, transition of the national backbone from 100 to 10G is scheduled next to first four quarter in case of Sinet, Japan. Signet is a national backbone network, provide backbone network. Uh, currently, mostly 100G and uh, between Tokyo and Osaka, two big cities are connected with 400G, but all uh, network uh, uh, will be connected via, uh, with 400G next year. This is a big challenge in this. And also this, uh, a transition, uh, you know, they expect to finish the transition within three months from January to uh, March next year. And, uh, and Korea, uh, Koreanet stressed, you know, uh, science application is critical to expand uh, the international circuits. They have a supercomputer and many applications, uh, grid applications and working and uh, international circuit will be expanded next year. And, uh, and Japanese, APAN JP North said, you know, service deployment on Kubernetes, uh, uh, they are selected Kubernetes and uh, and service deployment has been done. 
And uh, next, uh, where is Wukame? Next, where is Wukame? I'm sorry, sorry, next. Uh, okay. okay. This is the last slide. And uh, uh, GPX Tokyo with Rea 2 service has started, but uh, we have experienced, oh, the, the GX Tokyo is also connected to commercial IX within the same building. And uh, APAN JP consists of big four members. One is a NS Hynet, JGN, and Marfin Agriculture and Wide Project. Wide Project. These are four big uh, uh, members of APAN JP. And in, when we try to establish a GXP Toko, it took um, a few years uh, because you know coordination with APAN JP members is more, it's not so easy. Uh, we have four big members in APAN JP and it's not so easy to get a single solution, but well, thanks for the Muffin project, we got the uh, equipment for the Global Exchange uh, GXP uh, Tokyo, and we have established and started the operation of GXP Tokyo. Uh, next speaker is a Bhutan Ren, Drak Ren. Drak means you know, Bhutan in his uh, local languages. Drak Ren uh, is, is expanding, you know, more than 200 institutes under the government program of digital society. The keyword of digital society is very important, was very important for them to secure the budget. And uh, four, three, uh, advanced uh, technology, you know, Korea, uh, Koren, AI based transport SDN and the new IPSDN are adopted for the, uh, the new uh, uh, infrastructure. And uh, Four and five is you know, Hong Kong. Harnet uh, was operating you know, HKOX services, but uh, they stopped the operation and they are focusing on the uh, uh, international collaboration through the switches. Harnet r and in the, uh, you know, near the data center. And uh, the last was presentation is you know, made by HKIX. HKIX has nine R&D networks, where it's more than 330 commercial networks are connected to HKIX. Thanks for the big customers, you know, their equipments and their system are well controlled, well managed. Uh, for the network. Thank you very much. This is all. And uh, these are just summarized by me. And, and uh, please visit the uh, uh, program. You, know? you can get the presentation material uh, shown by uh, the first slide. Thank you very much. Thank you, Konishi san. Appreciate the uh, good summary. Um, so, we actually have, we obviously running well behind time, and I would just want to flag that um, there were in fact another four presenters who did not, uh, were not available to speak today. Um, I just wanted to wrap up the summary and then hand over to the, uh, the, the local organizing committee. Um, but I did want to just highlight my thanks for um, the wonderful team that's been supporting us throughout the whole uh, week. Um, I will let uh, Andre talk about the, uh, the, the local team. Um, but I just wanted to call out Liana and Sean for their great work behind the scenes, pushing and nudging and scheduling and fixing Zoom problems. And I also wanted to uh, highlight um, uh, Jamie, uh, work on the technical committee and um, uh, Francis Lee on the program committee, who is stepping down uh, at the end of this uh, meeting at the next uh, program committee meeting. And uh, also Andrew Howard for his phenomenal work, both on the technical front and taking on the, uh, the role hopefully of the, uh, as a new program committee chair. 
uh, along with Andre uh, starting soon. Let me hand it over now to our wonderful esteemed hosts um, led by uh, Dr. Andre Setiawan. Over to you, Andre. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's a great pleasure to have you, all of you guys in um, FN52. And we are very honored from Indonesia uh, to have more than 1,000 uh, registered participants, actually. So I'll share about some summary report from the APN52. Uh, let me see. <clears throat> okay, these are the, some important facts. Uh, so the APN52 uh, is happening uh, from the 2nd of August until the 6th of August, which is today. And the local organizing committee is Universitas Islam Indonesia. Uh, we use Zoom and Woofa basically to use uh, uh, to deliver all the streamings and everything else. And quite surprisingly, we have more than 1,000 uh, registrations uh, on the Woofa platform. That's quite a huge number. You know, I was expecting somewhere around like 700, 600 max maximum, but uh, we have 1,084s. Just like I did mention during the opening, um, hopefully the FN52 open uh, you know, a new opportunity. Uh, as uh, Francis mentioned many times during the meeting that uh, we need to have more young people in the APEN, you know, <laughs> rather than, you know, of course the scenario will still be there, but we need definitely more young people to engage more in this forum. And we have more than 39 economists that also joined uh, this, this APEN. This is some stats, uh, statistics uh, that happened uh, during our meeting in APN52. We have 13 working group sessions. We have six workshop training sessions. We have six meeting special sessions. We have five keynote sessions. We have three panel sessions. We have three birds of feather sessions, and we have two sponsor talks. These are the WOFA statistic. 75% uh, basically all the attendees downloaded the app. Um, and the message being exchanged is more than 1,000. Uh, to be exact, is 1,210. Uh, photos, uh, people share photos from even from last APAN, the previous APAN, when, when we still had the thing offline as well. So they put some nice photos over there, some screenshots. Uh, meetups also happen, uh, 27 meetups created, and we have more than 228 attendees participated. And for the sponsor impressions, uh, quite a huge number over here is uh, 135,787 135, uh, the impressions. Uh, so basically when they open the WUFA applications or the WUFA website, uh, the attendees, they, they will see the, the sponsor logo over there. Uh, in APN52, thanks to Marcus, uh, we introduced a special chat um, it's in, being introduced as a new platform for social time. Uh, basically, using this platform, uh, it simulates the what happened in a real uh, room. You know, when 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 you are close to someone, uh, you can hear their voice uh, louder. When you are far from someone, uh, the the sound will be uh, you know uh, the volume will be lower. And if you present something close to them, you can see the presentations. If you are far away from the person you will not be able to see the presentations. It is really nice to have the, some, uh, this special chat. Unfortunately, uh, the, the use of this special chat is not maximum at the moment. We probably need to provide some more campaign in the future, for, especially for the FN53, and because this is a really nice platform to have. And for the local organizing committee, we have 23 people as the organizing committee. We have 14 volunteers uh, doing the Zoom host uh, for the all working groups. And we use the uh, software called OBS and Restream basically to uh, stream everything on YouTube as well. So uh, during the first day and the second day, unfortunately for the Zoom, it was not HD enabled. And we have to coordinate with uh, Zoom, uh, request the support from Zoom to enable the HD uh, on Zoom. And now you can see the Zoom actually when you see on your screen, especially on big screen, uh, where the resolution is more than uh, HD, it's basically at minimum is 720p or 1080p. Uh, you will see a clear, uh, you know, uh, really sharp, nice uh, on, on Zoom platform as well. And hopefully uh, for the next APN53, all the event will be uh, running on HD. But 
even though on Zoom on during the first day and the second day is, was not on HD, we still have the Zoom record, uh, sorry, YouTube recording, YouTube stream, uh, which was uh, presented in HD format. So some people asking about uh, how did we set up the things. So these are the behind the scenes photos. As you can see, we use the green screens, uh, we use some lightings and everything else. Uh, the operators are using actually more than, you know, he, he used like three monitors, actually four with a, with a small laptop as well to monitor everything. Um, so we can have like seamless uh, movement from one uh, keynote speakers to the panels and everything else. Yeah, kudos to my folks that they they did pretty well uh, uh, during this, uh, you know, uh, especially for the keynote and also the panel as well. And I would like to thanks to our sponsors, uh, at the Asia Connect Project, uh, TNCC, and also Comscope, APNIC, IDNIC, and Internet Society. Again, big applause for all of you guys. Uh, without you, uh, definitely we could not deliver this uh, event pretty well. Um, so hopefully, again, in the next event, uh, you are still able to participate uh, in the, our future meetings. For the media coverage, uh, we have like three uh, local media outlets, uh, one national outlets and two uh, local outlets that covered the opening ceremony, which was officiated by the General Director of Higher Education of the Republic of Indonesia. And this for the closing remark, I would like to congratulate and thanks to all of us, the speakers, the sponsor, all registered participants. Again, more than 1,000 registered participants, participants. That was so amazing. With all of you guys actively participating in APN52, we had a pleasant and fruitful virtual meetings. Hopefully, in the all working groups, special chats, spread of feathers, keynotes, trainings, and workshop, you'll find something that interests and um, you bring home basically, uh, even though you are at home at the moment, bring home some, some, some good things and you can implement in your place. Also, big applause for the local organizing committee folks. I really have to thank them for their time and dedications. Ensuring the meeting went well. Last but not least, big thanks to APN Secretariat. Thanks for all the support. And most importantly, this is the one trusting us in Indonesia to host the APN 52 meeting. See you in APN 53 in Bangladesh. Thank you, Andre. There's virtual applause going across the room here. Um, let me invite the chair of APAN, Professor Jilong Wong, to the stage with some comments. Okay. Uh, Dr. Margaret, uh, dear all, I think uh, it's time to say congratulations on the success of this meeting. And uh, uh, everyone here have contribute very much, uh, including I think uh, our local host, uh, our program committee, uh, the technical committee, and all invited speakers and guests. And uh, um, our volunteers and all attendees and all session chairs and our APAN general manager, Marcus, and APAN SEC. Um, thanks everyone. Thank you for everything you have done for APAN 52. And here I have a special suggestion. Um, I want to invite another APAN chairman, dear Jared, to make this uh, closing command. Uh, because um, Jared told me he has decided not to continue to serve as APAN board. So I think uh, it's time we invite Jared to say goodbye formally. So, Jared, please. Well, that sort of explains why I was given uh, the privilege to be a panelist. I didn't know this was going to happen. There, you got you are bad guys. <laughs> yeah, that's a so surprise. Let, <laughs> that's a big surprise. So let me say this has been a really good conference. I, I'm I'm delighted by it. I've sort of dipped my my nose into various sessions, and it is actually uh, extremely rewarding to see just how the spirit of APAN continues. Uh, in, in a very trying circumstance. I mean, you know, to do this virtually and to achieve what we have uh, with all the work that's done and all of the working groups and all of the panelists and all of the speakers, 
um, and the and the participants. There's been a consistent level of uh, participation that's very very impressive. So um, yes, I thank you, uh, Geelong. I am going to um, not stand for the board again, um, but I'm certainly going to be following APAN, and I'm certainly going to be one of your um, uh, participants from afar if if we continue in the cyber role. And uh, maybe the we can make it. So little bit scared, but in course of time, as we are moving, as we are moving ahead, step by step, the guidance, the advice, and all kinds of cooperation and help from Appoint Secretariat, it's amazing. It's making our burden lighter, or the burden remaining the same. It is making our shoulder broader to take more responsibility. So I will not, I'm not going to officially invite the audience or the participants because my boss is here, is the vice chairperson, Professor Dr. Dila Froja Begum. She will give a small speech and then officially invite all of you to APAN 53 in Bangladesh. Hopefully with your guidance, with your cooperation, also the cooperation and help of APAN team, I only mentioned Dr. Marcus, but Liana was extremely helpful. She is still helpful. And also... See. Recording in so progress. Thanks to everybody. Thanks to IDRN. Thanks to University Islam Indonesia. Now I will introduce my boss, Professor Dr. Dila Froja Begum, to come to the floor, say something, and we have a small video for you. Thank you and welcome to Bangladesh on APAN 53 on March 2022. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable APAN President, Professor G. Long, respected general manager, uh, Dr. Marcus and distinguished guests. Uh, good afternoon. Let me introduce myself first. I am Professor Dr. Dilafruza Begum, member UGC and uh, vice chairperson BDRN, as well as the convener of the local committee uh, of APAN 53 in Bangladesh. Next slide. Let us have a brief of APAN 53. Host will be Bangladesh Research and Education Network, date 7 to 11, March 2022. Mode may be overseas participants will join virtually if pandemic prevails. Local participants might be invited to a venue provided the situation improves. Let us have a look into the roadmap of our uh, preparedness. We didn't will perform the activities from August to January, 2020. Uh, these are the activities are highlighted here. And uh, APAN and BDN jointly organize the events which are now shown before you. The progress so far, committees, where is the slide? slide. Oh, no, no, the previous slide. Committees, advisory committee framed, local organizing committee formed, subcommittees created, Chief case to be finalized by October 2021. Selection of sponsors offers to be sent. Selection of logos to be selected. Process has started. Selection of software may be over. And uh, budget, tentative budget identified. The station fees will be free, free of cost. And registration starts from October 2021. Development of web portal will start soon. Next slide. 
Uh, I would like to introduce you a short video on Bangladesh history, culture, nature, and Bidiran activities. Let us look into the video. Sound touch to Sina? Yes, Sound touch in the moment, please. Our nation is proud of having a glorious heritage of a pleasant and melodious language, a rich and magnificent culture. Our dear motherland had been repeatedly ravaged by foreign invaders. The country had been subjected to outside subjugation, exploitation, tyranny, wanton repression and oppression perpetrated by foreign rulers. The foreign rulers wanted to destroy our language and culture. Our resources had been plundered and the economy and infrastructure of the country had been destroyed. Against the backdrop of such an unbearable situation and by unfailing law and quirk of history, the greatest Bangali of all time, the father of the nation, Bongo Bondhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, the champion of freedom and justice, appeared on the political arena to establish the political rights of Bangali nation from the clutches of the formidable foes and colonial rule. Imprisonment or torture could not tame or frighten the courageous Bangali nation. Without submitting to repression, oppression, persecution and conspiracies, the valiant leader of immense moral strength and spirit marched forward with heroic vela for the emancipation of the Bangali nation. In course of long 23 years of struggle for freedom, he emerged as undisputed leader of the Bangali nation, which found a superhero in Sheikh Mujib, who declared in a confident voice of thunder on 7th March 1971. <laughs> After a long nine month of bloody war of liberation, the scarlet sun of independence rose in the eastern sky of Bengal on the 16th December 1971. A new state named Bangladesh was born. In 1973, then government founded the University Grants Commission to monitor and streamline higher education sector of Bangladesh. BDREN is the offshoot of Higher Education Quality Enhancement Project, HECEP, a Bangladesh Government and World Bank joint finance project, which was implemented by University Grants Commission, UGC, under Ministry of Education. The creation of BDRN came as a fulfillment of the dream of our Honorable Prime Minister of building a digital Bangladesh within shortest possible time. BDRN, Bangladesh Research and Education Network, came into being as a fulfillment of that cherished dream. BDRN came with the objectives of building and operating a high bandwidth, highly available secure network. Delivering networking services with cutting-edge technologies. Providing cost-effective and best-in-class services. Connecting with regional and global RENs. 
Introducing Innovative Services for Research and Education Community BDREN has already taken over more than 150 institutions under its belt, as its members including 45 public universities, 57 private universities, 13 medical colleges, 13 research institutes, and 17 higher secondary colleges. In the process, BDREN has extended its high-speed quality connectivity to universities, research institutes, and medical colleges across the country. Since the invasion of the pandemic in the country, BDREN has been providing the facilities to all the universities, both private and public, to conduct online classes free of cost using video collaboration, Zoom application, and its data center computing resources. During the last one and a half year, more than 18,000 faculty members conducted 1.6 million classes with a total duration of 1.8 million hours participated by 80 million students. Since its inception, BDREN conducted scores of international trainings, workshops and seminars attended by domestic and overseas NREN and community engineers, professionals and other dignitaries. A few of the prominent ones are Meet BDREN in 2015 and 16, TAIN 4 launching program in 2015 and Asia Connect launching in 2017. With all these development in country's research and education sector, BDREN is pleased to announce the hosting of the APAN 53 conference in March 2022 and would like to invite you all to join this auspicious event to make it engrossing, participative and effective. We bear the passion to organize the event physically at Cox's Bazaar, which embodies the largest sea beach in the world. We still cherish the desire to behold you, the scenic natural beauties the country possesses. But the devastation of the apocalyptic pandemic might not let that happen. Even if we are forced to organize the event virtually, we pledge to make it as real as possible by giving you the wonderful touch and glimpse of the rich culture, prestigious heritage, riveting natural beauties and envious hospitality of the people of the country. With all your blessings and cooperation, we will try to make the event enjoyable for you as well as a successful one. BDREN welcomes you all to APAN 53 in Bangladesh. Uh, thank you very much for patient hearing. Uh, see you all in our, in our uh, APAN 53 conference in Bangladesh. Thanks. Good afternoon. No. Mohammed, any last words? No. Huh? Welcome, no. everybody. No, welcome already in the video. Yes. Okay, thank you very welcome much to, to the great invitation. Yes. We really look forward to um, working with you on a really successful IPAN 53. Um, yes. You're right. Uh, Indonesia have set a very good bar for us. Um, I'm sure we will strive to reach it. Um, we have had enough people saying thank you and um, closing the meeting. My job is to wish you all safe travels home, although I think many of you already are. Um, yeah. I look forward to, uh, we'll you try our, our level best to organize this conference in a befitting manner. That will be wonderful. Thank you all. Thank you all for your patience. We are running well and truly over time, but the General Assembly usually is a, a big and exciting session. Um, and we'll work on the scheduling of it for future meetings. Thank you all and farewell. I wish well, you. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Marcus. Thank, thank you. you. See you. See you. Bye. Bye.